and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Geek Watch, a subsidiary of the monastery, the open bar of the internet. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me is my good brother here in the temple, the man of a thousand and six holds, the man who is the who is the founder of the Kevin Steen Appreciation Society. And the man who suffers with me every year as a, as a fan of a lower lower tier hockey team. Good brother, Matty. At least the hockey is good. <laughs> Ish. <laughs> hey, hey. No matter, no matter. We can all agree on we can all agree on one thing. At least we're not Dan Snyder. You yes, sir. And again, going back to the hockey thing. I'll go back to a selling point uh, that I had when I was selling TV rentals at the hospital. I don't care who wins as long as the Leafs lose. You know how and there's no, the they're same. Winning. They're winning now. They're winning now, but uh -huh. <laughs> congratulations. Your team still still can't get past the first round. <laughs> that's my that's my thing. Oh, oh, they're winning in the regular season? Yawn. Let yeah. me know. Call me when they actually win a playoff series. Then we'll talk. Then, then we'll start getting concerned. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> but you know how you know how with the NFL, there's that saying: when Dallas loses, America wins. I think the same yeah. can apply with Canada and the Leafs. Uh, to be fair, at this point, well, uh, Canadians around will say we'll we'll take the toxic the, the toxic fandom that is that is Leafs fandom. So long as we get a cup in this, in this fucking country again. I and for those of you who say, well, Manny, the Montreal, they, they, have, they almost won it last year. Folks, we played spoiler during that playoff season. We knew we had no chance in hell. I'm, at least I knew. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and given the, given the, it was basically, an, it was basically an all in run and, you and I have you and I have made it very clear. All in runs are very you know very the crazy high part risk. About, about the Habs in that run to the Stanley Cup playoffs. We locked our asses into that playoff, mm -hmm. both both the bubble and now. We were we when we fought, won that first round, we were in house money, both rounds. Yeah, and I think a lot of people say, "Yeah, it's an all in one." It turned into an all run, all in run. Mm -hmm. But we, we didn't expect it all all in run. We just like, all right, we're in the playoffs. Cool. And, oh, we won the series. Awesome. Let's not go too deep. Wait, 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 wait. Third round against the Flurry fucked up. Holy shit. Hey, we'll you, believe me. I was happy as hell that we had our one playoff win at home. Mm -hmm. Our one Stanley Cup win at home. And there's a part of me that aches to see Carey uh, Price so damn close yet so goddamn far away. Because he, if there's anyone on that team that's earned a Stanley Cup, it's Carey fucking Price. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is what it is. I also don't know. I also don't know how to feel regarding um, Melnick as as somebody who as a person who has been the target of my scorn for years. And believe me, he was a target of a lot of people scoring in the last five years. And yeah, we're getting the hockey talk now. In case we don't get, we don't get the playoff show. But, yeah, uh, yeah, just in case, um, people, you know, we we shit on Melnick, and a lot of it was for good reason. But a lot of people forget if it weren't for Eugene Melnick, we wouldn't be talking about the Ottawa Senators' run, their miracle run in the early two thousands. Mm -hmm. They weren't have that have had that. The team was in that much danger, so you you take the good with the bad. Yeah, Melnick did a lot of good for that team. But unlike the Senate, unlike the expansion senators, I do not apologize. No, to be fair, after what he did to fuck up LeBron, the, the 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 future home of the senators in downtown Ottawa. Which we still blame him for being a fucking idiot for fucking that up. Look, our cond my condolences go to go to the family, the uh, family and friends. It still sucks that the, the owner of the of the franchise who's going to step up. There's a lot of uncertainty here. It's a scary time if you're a Sens fan. Mm -hmm. But if you look at me, as a dude, he lost my simpy the the minute that he uh, the LeBron Flats deal fell through his fucking fault. 
So mm-hmm. there's remember, that. I remember I remember Sid having some strong words on it, but then again, it's Sid. It's Sid Sixero. I mean, for God's sakes, when when the Leafs lost that playoff run and they did this whole 60-second rant thing just being silent, can you blame him, by the way? No, I can't. Um, that, now, that being, that being said, I figured we'd get that out of our system because I, I have my doubts about whether or not I'm going to do a playoff breakdown of... Um, of the of the Stanley Cup playoffs this year, or if I'm going to wait until after the Stanley Cup and just do a debriefing. Yeah, I think at this point, as we want to do an NHL show, it's literally okay. When's the best time? Mm-hmm. Is it before or after? And you're still figuring that out. I'm good for whatever. You know, my Thursdays are open, so yeah. and my Mondays, to mm-hmm. be fair. Though we are doing the thing on Monday, yeah, the the, the thing that we're doing on the on the Mondays. Yeah, we can adjust. <laughs> Adju- adjustments can be made. Mm-hmm. It wouldn't be. Th- there's a reason why it. O- there's a reason why every ad for a pay per view always says card subject to change. Yep. Speaking of which, so the last hey. time I, the last time that I had you you on for a Geek Watch special, mm-hmm. we had t- we had talked extensively about the tr- about the trials and tribulations. Of Ring of Honor Wrestling, from its from its humble beginnings as a super indie, to its to the decl- to the declining to the declining days, which in the, bu- I, in the I, bubble era. Which I think we both must reiterate that yeah, we took our time with it, and yet we we were super brief about the history of Ring of Honor. There, obviously, there are a few uh, there are a few other YouTube channels that did a great job. I have to point out the Luke Owen and Ollie Davis and the crew over there, our parts from known slash Russell talk. Mm-hmm. They do like, they're doing a multi-parter parter about the, the rise and fall and rise again of ring of honor. Folks, you listen to this show. You listen to the one we talked about uh, on uh, final battle. And we thank you very much for doing it. But mm-hmm. if, if you want a, f- a fairly ac- another fairly accurate representation of what ring of honor was, we, we, we point you to those directions. You know, don't just trust us. Just don't, don't just trust a gaming monk and a wrestling dude who's who barely entertains ten people a week. Though I appreciate those ten people. Don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. Just saying, I'm not the only one with that opinion. With opinions on on matters. Yeah. Now, with that with that in mind, the, when we left last, that the all, last time on Ring of Honor, mm-hmm. final battle happened. Final battle and... happened. And it it was a very good show, especially yeah. the locker room sellout. And it ver- the reason why I wanted to do the um, Legacy of Honor episode is it really did feel like this was the end. It felt it felt like say that say that um that spring that spring break episode of of Nitro where it was supposed to be the where. What it was, was it the was, last was very the, much the end of uh, very much and still technically is mm-hmm. an ev- the end of an era. Yeah, I think a lot of people the and I think a lot of people looking at Ring of Honor and especially Super Card of Honor, which I have the card up and I, we we both have the, the card up and we'll discuss that card, of course. This the history of Super Card of Honor twenty five is its own little thing that we'll we'll get into. But the end of of the of the Sinclair era of Ring of Honor, as it as it will inevitably be called, is its own thing. Mm-hmm. The intention before the buyout, and we'll, we'll obviously we'll get to that because that's part of the history. The whole thing was it was a reboot. It was a blow up, and it was and we called it as such in the months up leading up to Final Battle. Mm-hmm. When it comes to now, you know, <laughs> who saw a batshit crazy billionaire buying up a, a buying up a wrestling company? One who no, not Vince McMahon. <laughs> another batshit crazy billionaire. There is no sh- There is no Shane here. There is only Zool. Yeah, I had to get the Ghostbuster right. joke out of my system. Although, are you a guy? I, I've heard Afterlife is good. I, I need to watch that this week. Afterlife weekend. is good. It's got a couple. 
it stumbles in a couple points, but ev but its heart is in the right place. That's good. Okay. I look forward to watching it this weekend. Then, mm -hmm. anyway, where do you want to start with uh, on this one, Monk? You lead. You, you are leading the boat here. <laughs> so, I think we need to. I think we need to recap where exactly Sinclair went wrong. And during right. during their during their ownership, so we can to have that as contrast. At the end of Spaceballs, here's the short short version. Sinclair in the final months of the Sinclair run, a lot of stuff had happened. Where obviously we uh, there was a hack. Uh, there there was a, a major hack at Sinclair Sinclair Broadcasting, where a lot of data was leaked. A lot of stuff, including uh, a few episodes of Ring of Honor Television which had to be delayed because of those hacks. Mm -hmm. And it turns out that it cost Sinclair... I, I don't have the, the amount of money in my head, but I can tell you, uh, in TV speak, a shitload of money. Mm -hmm. So much so that a wholesale... I want to say a wholesale... Not a purge, but a restructuring had to happen. This, in turn... I mean... Sinclair had always had a bare minimum approach with Ring of Honor. There, there's a reason why the Bucks, Cody, Kenny, and a whole lot of people left ROH and New Japan combined to form AEW. They saw the hot hand they had and and the powers that be running Ring of Honor, or at least the paymasters, not seeing it. Mm -hmm. Basically, a no bunch of non-wrestling people not seeing the potential to make a shitload of money. And, of course, Tony Khan stepped in, did all that thing. That's a story for yeah. another day, of course. Meanwhile, Ring of Honor and New Japan, they hold their new their Madison Square Garden show, as we discussed previously. Mm -hmm. The show was a success, but only because it, because it was sold on, on the predication of the elite and Bully Club still being around. But, it was, but as far as the in-ring product... It was clear that New Japan would uh, keep in mind this is 2018. New Japan was on was still on its hottest streak ever, and Ring of Honor had just lost the elite. Mm -hmm. you, you, again, lots of lots of documentation, lots of stuff. I've made my opinion clear on it years ago. It's pretty I'm pretty sure it's on YouTube somewhere, either on RVTs or mine. Long story short, there was a decline. Now Sinclair was now Sinclair was like was and Joe Coff they were willing to keep pump the money because they knew at least it's good TV. Uh, yeah, th that's the thing about syndication. Uh, there's no luxury of uh, putting it in a, in a in a prime spot everywhere in the world, uh, unless you're Wheel of Fortune or Jeopardy. Uh, even Family Feud doesn't even have that. Long story short. The decline still continued. While, meet, while the product may have suffered without the Elite, it was still fairly decent. They still had a great roster of, of people. Hell, I went to the to to to, to do the uh, uh, War of the Worlds uh, show uh, back in uh, 28, uh, 2019, just a little bit after uh, the Supercard of Honor. So that was twenty nineteen. So I screwed up my my years already. Like I said, I'm not the most reliable reliable guy. And I went there, and I was happy to meet all these people. I got there's this picture of me with Katsuyori Shibata, Monk. You remember? You remember that 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 picture? Yeah. I was happy in my head place that day, mm -hmm. but it was clear by the fact that the the event was not sold out. In fact, ringside was full, but the hockey seats were not. That uh, obviously a decline in interest in Ring of Honor had indeed happened. This was literally at the beginning of a, of all week wrestling. This was double or nothing. We had the month of double or nothing. Fast forward to the uh, to, to the hack, and the fact that let's be honest, Ring of Honor will had started to lose money. Again, good product, but not making money. Again, all Sinclair's fault, bare minimum, and not really giving Ring of Honor any chance to even thrive, especially with the television product. The pay per view product was good, the thing on TV not so much. Mm -hmm. Now, the hack produced a few things, and Joe Coff, to his credit, fought for Ring of Honor. He wanted to keep it as it as it was, 
before final battle. But, as we all know, St. Clair said, enough is enough, blow it up. And of course, there was the tweet and, and the, the, the image that was the, the, the public statement saying, final battle will be it. We're stopping for a month. We're stopping until a super card of honor in April in 2022. And after that, it is what it is. Basically, say basically they let everybody go. All the contracts, either at the end of final battle or at the end of April, depending on who, who what the situation, it gets complex. Complex on the talent contracts there. But as of this recording, anyone that under the old Sinclair contracts, everyone gone. That the 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 that 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 link is severed. The let me get let me get me get straight. Of course, final battle happened. We discussed that. People will start to move around. The, the the pure championship was defended. The Ring of Honor TV, the Ring of Honor World Titles, the tag titles were 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 uh, were, were defended. Pretty much every championship except the TV title. What was defended? Mm -hmm. And of course, they well, they, if you don't have a TV product, you can't really defend it. So Red the Red Titus got this got the Russell as a TV champion, and he probably defended it. But there's no, I to my knowledge, there wasn't any any record uh, of it being defended though if there is a case to do feel feel free to let me know mm -hmm. i know i'm probably wrong in that effect of course the ring of honor tag team titles were the big focal point i mean the world title was a focal point jonathan gresham was uh jonathan gresham the co uh, a collective of people uh went to impact jonathan gresham would defend it all over the place and uh he would go to impact in, in the interim and a bunch of people including a uh, Mike Canellis, Maria, uh, Mike Bennett, Mary Canellis, Matt Taven, PCO, and there's a whole lot of people that I'm forgetting. But a new group called Honor No More would show up in Impact Wrestling, throw some general chaos. To our knowledge, there's no contract situation yet. So, and I'm, I'm assuming at this point with Tony Khan uh, doing what he did. That pretty much seals like oh, people are in Impact are probably going to stick around for Impact at least for a little while longer. Jonathan Gresham defended his title, the pure title, which was held by Josh Woods, was defended a couple of times. In fact, it was defended mostly in the Indies. And the tag titles, well, the Briscoes and FTR did not waste motion or word or breath. Mm -hmm. Hence, the build-up to Supercard of Honor began. Though we didn't know it was going to be the build-up Supercard of Honor. A lot of people were thinking... At the, the 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 line of thinking at the time was, let's get it on AEW. We'll get to that in a second. Mm -hmm. Let's get it out on Impact. Impact went well. It, we don't. We're not exactly. Well, we're not enemies. We're with with all elite wrestling. We're not exactly friends either. The guy that facilitated it was what uh, w w w facilitated it was Don Callis, and we shit canned him. Mm -hmm. Or he left. They, they shit canned them in kayfabe. In in, in uh, reality, it was a like mutual departure. Mm -hmm. And I'm keeping it very simple. Mm -hmm. Long story short, FTR and Briscoes. It was a war of words uh, that kept going uh, on Twitter, on Facebook, and on video, uh, folks. The Briscoes uh, may be controversial as far as uh, opinions outside of wrestling, but in wrestling. Uh, they are a unique promo of their own, and they are responsible for that. Uh, mostly responsible for the buildup with FTR being FTR, of course. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing: a week before AEW Revolution, and now you're wondering why you're throwing what, Maddie? Maddie, why are you throwing Tony Khan? Well, in case you, you're living on, sorry, press the button there. In case you're living under a rock. Um, there's this company, but that Tony Khan owns called Elite Wrestling, and he's he's had, he's hosted a couple of Ring of Honor title matches. He's hold his, he's hosted a couple of Ring of Honor people. He signed Jay Lethal, and at and at Final Battle, he loaned Jay Lethal and a, few, and a few wrestlers to help out with Ring of Honor to wrap up that that thing. And of course, we all know the rumors of the sale. You could jump in, Mildred. You you, you yep. keep up as much of that st that stuff as I do, so you could mm -hmm. definitely help out with that. Yeah, I will. I will when I will when the time is right. But um, fair enough. <laughs> and that, that long story short, 
Tony Khan, he's signing up some people. The rumors start flying. Vince wants to buy this. Tony wants to buy that. And Tony, a week before, uh, the Friday before the Dynamite, before a revolution, mm -hmm. he's at Daly's place. He's going, I got a big announcement. We don't know what that big announcement until literally minutes before every goes live and Tony Khan steps into the ring with Tony Schiavone and matter of factly and in in a in a very excited tone that makes people think he was on cocaine that night though to be fair if you're high on adrenaline after literally well as he said bought ring of honor no no not not just a tape library not just a ring of production no no he flat out fucking bought ring of honor tape library and everything if you're that excited, you'd be on. You'd be like King Kong on cocaine. Yeah. And so it is. And so it shall pass. Ring of Honor under new management. Now, the old management had already announced Supercard of Honor as a, as a reboot. As in, okay, we're going to be back. We're going to be. It's going to be WrestleMania weekend. We're going to do our show. At the time, it's I had likened it to the Big Bang. Yeah, for those wondering, the Big Bang, WCW before it was bought by by WWE by Vince McMahon was supposed to be bought by a group led by Eric Bischoff and a few rich motherfuckers because you need rich motherfuckers to buy big stuff like that. Basically, the predication of WCW of buying WCW was okay. We're going to buy the ring. We're going to buy. We're here's the here's the amount of money. And the agreement stemmed where, okay, we'll buy your thing, and WCW will, will only be responsible for, for providing two hours on TV. And whether it's TBS or TNT, would be to the discretion of, of AOL Time Warner, the owners of TBS and TNT at the time. However, the people who run AOL Time Warner, specifically Jamie Kellner, uh, said, fuck wrestling. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm I'm generalizing it, but that's basically what he said. He didn't. They were. They did not want wrestling on TBS or TV. They were done with wrestling, despite the fact that wrestling was at least mostly responsible for the early success of WTBS. Mm -hmm. But that's another story for another day. Long right. story short, with TV with TNT. With, with the paymasters and the people owning TNT and TBS saying we're not, you could have everything else, but you do not have the TV. As Eric Bischoff plainly plainly said, and I quote, "Well, without the TV, the it's worth pennies." Now, have the deal come through and AOL Time Warner, you know, not be dicks about it. The plan was. Panama City Beach, Florida, would have likely have been the final show for the Nitro. Period. The the the, the like the, the WWE likes it like in the, where where it's like, oh no, they would have kept going, kept going, kept going. The, the the plan, the Night of Champions, the show that you had, the original concept of Night of Champions was to be the last episode. Period, for a, a hiatus of the, of WCW until mid July. Where you start seeing, of course, you would see uh, things like the Big Bang happening. You know, that was the word you would see. The Big Bang would be the first pay per view, and then Nitro will be back in, 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 in and in a central location. Basically, TNA wrestling. Basically, the concept of TNA wrestling, essentially. And of course, they would the the, the roster would be you know maybe one big star that wanted to stick around and. All young stars, mostly from the, the remains of the uh, Turner era of WCW. Mm -hmm. So that's what Monk is referencing. Yeah. Now, then the then the announcement was made that he that Tony Khan had purchased Ring of Honor. Oh, which you were on the call for that one, and mm -hmm. we were marking the hell out over the possibilities. Now, yeah. Especially, especially since it, it also. I remember in the media. I remember in the media scrum shortly afterwards. Um, CM Punk talking about how he was gl he was glad to see the purchase and he was glad to see it not in Junior's hands. 
Uh, by the way, the media strum for a revolution mm-hmm. is what Monk is uh, referencing. But yeah, he was happy that Tony was going. At least the media library was going to be treated with respect. Yeah, and I, I had. And by the way, by the way, if it was just the tape, I, I predicted it was just going to be the tape library. Which even then, that was going to be huge mm-hmm. because guess what, folks? In the mythology of of uh, AEW, what's its biggest? What what is the biggest? Pilot, the, the proof of concept. What's the big show? Mm-hmm. All in. Ring of Honor and Sinclair agreed to help produce Ring of Honor, that at least to produce All In, to help cut down the production costs, and in exchange, they would have the streaming rights. So basically, if you had All In, if you bought All In, and the money went to Ring of Honor, mm-hmm. and you could wa- keep watching on a fight, or you could buy, or if you didn't, you could watch it. On Honor Club. Mm-hmm. Now, so obviously, makes- Tony Khan had a vested interest in even just that part. Yeah. Now, that brings us to Supercard of Honor, which up until up until up until the last few weeks, the we only really knew about two matches on the card. And obviously, we knew more, we knew more in the days leading up, but for the most yeah. for the for the four or so months in between Final Battle and Supercard of Honor, I only knew about two matches. The first one, the first one was the main event. And the second one was the um, other main event. Yeah, the, the, for those wondering, at the time, the two matches that were, if not advertised, but very heavily believed to be a part of of the the, the of the card. Will be the unification match for the Ring of Honor World Title, which Gresham had won the uh, what was known as the classic Ring of Honor title, the belt the belt that he's currently wearing right now, as a matter of fact. Mm-hmm. And Bandito, who who uh, as we mentioned last time we were I was on, how was had tested positive for COVID nineteen and could not defend the title against Jonathan Gresham. Now it's believed the plan was to put the belt on Gresham regardless. But because Bandito ca- uh, got caught something in, in a very bad case of bad timing, mm-hmm. that, that it was it was agreed that this would be the that, that, that everyone would be wrapped in bubble wrap and kept hermetically sealed until Supercard of Honor. Yeah. The other one, the previously mentioned rivalry between FTR and the Boys. Mm-hmm. To, for the uh, ring of for the ring of honor tag team titles, yeah. Now, <clears throat> with that with that said, super super card of honor was it was a WrestleMania weekend show, and um, and for those wondering, this would all all the buildings were bought by Sinclair. Everything was booked. This this was a Sinclair planned th- situation from the get, and when Tony bought. Instead of canceling and lose a little bit of money, they said, "Well, you know, let's run it. Let, why not?" Mm-hmm. And Tony had said, "Tony Khan had been very adamant. By the way, he doesn't want to. Did not want to run WrestleMania weekend. He did not want to be in the vicinity of the city hosting WrestleMania weekend. He didn't believe in that. But Ring of Honor was, and it had been advertised. So that's where we are at now. Yeah. And it's funny that you bring up that I brought up uh, the final Nitro, the Night of Champions." Because one of the vibes I got from this was, okay, this is kind of kind of a mix of the reboot, the rebirth of Ring of Honor, and also a little bit of Night of Champions, mm-hmm. WCW and WWF. All right, the people who are staying, you get the belts. Those who are leaving, kindly hand them over. Mm-hmm. That includes you, Scott. Now, the now it now. Obviously, when it can, obviously we have we had a lot of familiar names on 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 the matter and inc- ranging from because we have um, we have Ian Riccoboni and Caprice Coleman on commentary, um, which was a smart call. Mm-hmm. Caprice Coleman strikes me as a better version. He he has a bit of the same energy that Pope had when he when he was doing commentary, but he but Caprice is better at it. Pope was interested in being in cunning promos as Pope D'Angelo and De Niro. Mm-hmm. And for those wondering, that is indeed the former Elijah Burke from WWE. Mm-hmm. No, no fact for you who have not stuck around all these years. And 
the the thing was obviously this was WrestleMania weekend. This was the weekend after the slap heard around the world. And look, I'm I'm, I'm gonna say this: Caprice Coleman is good, but Caprice, for the love of God, you're not the Fed. You don't have to be that fucking current. Like every time there was a slap, oh Will Smith, oh there's a Chris Rock, dude. We get it. A dude slapped another dude. Mm-hmm. Um, this is why I usually use the joke of the sound of one hand clapping, because that will always be timeless. Oh yeah. Um, that or if you, if you need if you need to make a if you need to make a reference, just bring up Dave Chappelle's Rick James impression. Yeah. <laughs> And by the way, that was memed, of course. Mm-hmm. That, 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 was, that was indeed referenced in the meme. Uh, I'm not that surprised. I would bring up, I would bring up slapping it like an, MP, like an MP5, but um, that's going to be a bit of a deeper cut. <laughs> that's a deep cut, yeah. <laughs> but the, the, um, set, the setup that we have, because we... Cause, um, now, unfortunately, I don't have the I don't have the numbers for as far as far as how many people were in. Um, but there was, was no, yeah, there was nothing reported on that. It, it would have been in the wiki by now, mm-hmm. uh, but it looked to be at around a thousand people and a lot of interested parties. Pretty sure, like it was selling fine, and then Tony Khan bought it and it sold out within a minute or something like that. I'm fairly certain there was a lot of people. Holy shit! I want to mm-hmm. see this. So the presentation was generally kept the same. Yeah, like it's, the, the Ring of Honor stage stayed the same. Obviously, the crew stayed there. Obviously, Bobby Cruz had to show up, but uh, no, th- th- there was partic- there is a particular ref whose name escapes me. Let me see about the staff. I don't think they had the staff. No, they didn't have the staff in there. Oh, they they uh, there. I there's three. Oh, refs there we go. Uh, yeah. yeah. There was Mike Posey, Paul Turner, who is a former Ring of Honor, and there, of course, Mike Posey. But no, um, ah, there's another one. That that uh, <clears throat> I'm gonna have to go. I'm gonna have to check the uh, Ring of Honor wiki real quick. But uh, there were some. There were some. You could see there were some. There was some notable or not so notable absences. Mm-hmm. Obviously, uh, Kerry Silken was there, so that that's fair. But uh, there's a name, and I need to. I need to find referee. Come on. Ah, really? No, no. Huh. All right. To be to be continued on that. Sorry. <laughs> But uh, but uh, to be continued. But there were, you could tell that you that this was a this was a Tony Khan production. The quality of the, of some of the shots was 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 a lot was a lot less indie, a lot more. Hey, let's produce a TV show. Let's actually produce wrestling, in, in a sense. Um, and I, I say that it's a AEW production because when we get to the pure, uh, pure the Ring of Honor Pure Wrestling Championship. One thing that I that I have that I have commended Sinclair in doing when they brought back the title was they actually had a graphics package displaying okay who's the the, the time in, left in the fall and a way to keep track of the of the road breaks that was not brought up in, uh, in, in, in that was not brought up in the championship matches since the 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 the, the thing Todd yeah. Sinclair. Is 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 the referee I was speak I was thinking of actually, mm-hmm. and and uh, he was not part of the referee crew for this one, which was another missing. Everyone else was there, but I was like, as confis- conspicuous by his absence was Todd Sinclair. Yeah. Now, the now um, I think we sh- I want to cover briefly the pre-show matches, even though. It's pre-show matches, so there's not a whole lot to talk about. I mean, even with the pre-show, there are some things with continuity in, in the main show that need to be brought up. Also, you do get like, an idea of, okay, there is obvious respect with, with the last few years of Ring of Honor. Colt mm-hmm. Cabana was part of Ring of Honor uh, before he joined it, but before he joined uh, uh, Ollie Wrestling in the pandemic, though he had left Ring of Honor for NWA 
And of course, the pandemic happened, so he joined AEW in the meanwhile, joined the Dark Order, and we we all know where that where that went. But he was there. Uh, cheeseburger was there, not as CW, but as as actual cheeseburger. Yes, as an actual wrestler. They call him that because he, for God's sakes, can eat a cheeseburger. Yeah, although um, I, one of the big things that, I, that I'll, I'll always remember about Cheeseburger is the fact that, for whatever reason, he, he has said that he refuses to do a moonsault. <laughs> uh, well, I think it was either, either a moonsault or something like that, but he... he I can't remember if it was a moonsault or a leg drop, and to which I, if it was a moonsault, to that I say... um. Well, I would say you could learn if you could learn a thing or two from Jeff Hardy, but there's a reason why Jeff Hardy doesn't do moon salts. Nope. Also, I'm glad you didn't go for the obvious EC EC three Mark promotion. Um, I refuse I have to call it the what he wants me to call it because I've seen that show. Oh God, you're wasting Braun Strowman, you fucking idiot. Um, I'm gonna I'm going to use a very nasty comment. Regarding, regard regarding CYN, and um, it's going to be one that I do not make lightly, especially especially with especially with the shit talking that that Schiff was doing this week. CYN, if they don't shape up, are going to turn into XPW. Oh, oh, especially with that accusation that the. That their roster is being blackballed from working with AEW, which I don't buy. I don't believe for a minute. I don't buy that either. I think some. I think that's that could be something within the company that's doing that. Because last time I checked, Tony Khan's a businessman. He's not that dumb to ban everybody. Look, he'll want EC3 will want to make money eventually, mm -hmm. and he ain't gonna do it with the Fed. Why? Why would you blackball talent like EC3 and Adam Schur? To name a few, yeah. But putting that, and putting the if you're blackballing everybody, well, there goes Eric Red Redbeard. Yeah, I and people I, like Redbeard. I like Redbeard. He's one of my local boys. Yeah. Um. Uh, that be that being said, first pre-show match we had was Colt Cabana beating Blake Christian in about eight minutes. Yeah. Um. Then we had AQA beating Miranda Elise. Um, crowd was the crowd was warm for that one. To be fair. Mm -hmm. Um. Then we have um J Gates of Agony beating the Shinobi Shadow Squad. That's cheeseburger to <laughs> ice them. Mm -hmm. Uh. So here's where we we this is where we stop and say if if you notice there's with Tully Blanchard. Tully Blanchard pops up before mm -hmm. introducing the Gates of Agony. Mm hmm. Here, and here's the thing. This is where the beginning of where you see where Tony Khan is, is what the intention or what Tony Khan's intention is with Ring of Honor. Because this is a lot of a lot of AEW signed talent with nowhere to go or nothing to do. T Tully Blanchard just got split off of, of, of FTR because FTR, I don't know if you might have noticed, but uh, they want to they, they are clearly turning babyface mm -hmm. or at the very least anti hero babyface. They're the kind of guys that they we don't care if the boo us or like us. We're just here to work to be the best goddamn tag team on this island earth. Mm -hmm. Tully Blanchard and his uh, what's he gonna do? Tony comes. You want, you want to start a faction in Ring of Honor? And Tully Blanchard obviously said yes. Introduces Jasper uh, Jasper Khan or Jasper Khan or I. I'm not even gonna try this, but of course Toa Leona. They're a couple of good dudes. A uh, couple of hired goons mm -hmm. for and now. Right and now. it was a two, it was a two minutes and change squash as it, it was a been. squash. You're you're not gonna you're not gonna have cheeseburger wrestle ten minutes. <laughs> no, I mean he could wrestle ten minutes. He's has wrestled 10, 15 minutes matches mm -hmm. and competently. Here you, you're 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 here to eat that you're here to eat you're here to eat it to make yeah, the, the the new the new team of tell the with uh tell the Blanchard Enterprises look good. Mm -hmm. Um. And the main event of the pre-show was Dalton Castle defeating Joe Hendry in uh, in just under ten minutes. 
Dalton oh. Queen Castle versus Joe Henry, local hero. Mm-hmm. Though oh. he's obviously changed his gimmick a little bit, which is tad sad. Yeah, I um, as the only the only thing that I rec- it may it may be a vain hope of mine, but there's a there's a small part of me that wants um Joe Hendry to do some sort of musical collab with a with one of the guitar tubers, maybe even Little V. Oh yeah, um, you know, just get just get somebody. Just get somebody with a with a acoustic guitar to play him in. Sure, because well, one one of the one of the things hey, I like get Elias. His brother is taking care of his shit in WWE. Get Elias in there. <laughs> <laughs> that'd that'd be that'd certainly be a heat magnet. Um, but then we Why get not? Into, then we get into the main show, and we have Zane family member Alex. <laughs> and whose house? Swerve's house. <laughs> oh. and I am. I am very. Th- I am very happy to see Swerve Strickland. Um, get getting on getting on his feet because he is. He has been getting featured quite a bit in the last few weeks. Yeah, it, it, not only the last few weeks, but ever since his uh, his. Uh, his thirty days ran out. He's been running around the the indies. He's been do, he did well in GCW. Uh, well, he had a great a couple of bangers in GCW. Of mm-hmm. course, once he signed with Ring of Honor, uh, obvi- no, not just Ring of Honor, AEW. Mm-hmm. Confusion, folks. Apologies. He signed with uh, AEW, and a lot of people say, "Well, why would he start with Taz? What else you gonna do with him? Mm-hmm. Got to do something to put him on TV." And Keith Lee got to do something to. Something and we want to see Will Hobbs versus Keith Lee. I mean, who cares if it's Team Taz or not? You want to see Keith Lee versus Will Hobbs, mm-hmm. but I, I digress. Yeah, rails, Maddie, rails. Now yeah, the Swerve, Swerve in particular has mm-hmm. had a collection of great matches, mm-hmm. and this is one of them. <laughs> like, yeah, they won eleven forty, but it, 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 yeah, they didn't need more or less. Um. You know, I, I was gonna, I was gonna say maybe, maybe they should consider sending Swerve over when Best of the Super Juniors happens. But if that, but if they can't do that, well, I wouldn't be surprised if Khan says, "I'll do my, I'll do my own, I'll do my own light heavyweight tournament with Blackjack and Hookers." They well, do have a TV title, and I well, mean, it's on, it's on, it's on the shoulders of uh, of Samoa Joe now, but mm-hmm. they could do something. Yep, just saying. There, no. there is the Future of Honor tournament. There, there, mm-hmm. So you could, you know, you want to bring that back. There's that. Yeah. You know. Oh, but this was this was this was a pretty good this was a pretty good high flyer kind of opener. Um, I, <laughs> I understand. I understand that that Alex Zane is kind of leaning into the pirate gimmick, but I have a hard time with pirate gimmicks in wrestling. It brings back too many memories. Look, Vince fucked up. Uh, fucked Paul Birchall. Fucked mm. up Paul Pearl Birchall. To be mm. fair, yeah. And at the at the very at the very least, he's he's committing to the bit. I just I need some more time. To- I need some more time and and watch some more stuff with Alex Zane before I can really get a feel for him. That's fair. Oh, but it but it was a good. But this was, was good this was a showcase match for both, but mm. with Swerve going over. So yeah. Be- so to be perfectly honest, it is what it is. There, and I bring that kind of thing up because, regard because regardless, a lot of people were coming into this pay per view, w- being very lapsed from the goings on of Ring of Honor. So I yeah, think- this was a case of uh, yeah, obviously lapsed for for the last four months, and a lot of people just straight up stop, stopped stopped uh, watching because well, Ring of Honor wasn't, wasn't cool anymore. So this card, and I was going to bring it up at the end, but this was a combination of, of respect for the past and of respect for the people who stuck around to the bitter end, mm-hmm. as well as as a blueprint slash very st- small teaser into the future of Ring of Honor. Mm-hmm. This was part WCW, the, the, the final, this was a combination of both WCW's final Nitro and Big Bang. And if if you want to bring the if you want to do a callback, I think that's where yep. you would probably throw in that callback. Not necessarily a joke, but just a case of just if you want to. It's a mission. It's 
the intentions are there. Yeah. Okay. We respect the history of Ring of Honor. We want to we we bring back as many people as we can, but we got our own people who are signed, mm-hmm. and we want to take we we want to treat our people at the same time. Yeah. Anyone that's signed with AEW slash Ring of Honor who wants to stick around, they are the focus of the card. Mm-hmm. But there is enough respect for the past, or at least the past a year or two, to say, okay, we, we want to do this right. Mm-hmm. And in fairness, he did. Now, case in point of the future of Ring of Honor. Yep, that brings us to the next now, sure. So Comes out, he's first, not done with, with Tony hang, Blit, with hang Tony on, Blit hang Enterprises. First thing we get, it. We, this was advertised as Ninja Mac versus a mystery opponent, i.e., Tully Blanchard's newest client for Tully Blanchard Enterprises. He comes out. Brian Cage! And you put two and two together, and now there's a reason why he, why the extension was picked up. Mm-hmm. For those wondering, there, are a lot of people were, a lot, there was a, a lot of hubbub about people, including Joey Janela and, uh, and, uh, Marco stunts uh, uh, AEW contracts running running muck, and among all that or running out, and of course uh, Brian Cage was um, among them, and he was very vocal about his uh, non-use. Mm-hmm. And then they picked up the extension, and the reason why even he didn't know was well, there was an NDA on, on, on the purchase until until it was all done. Mm-hmm. Tony Khan was not allowed was legally not allowed to tell anybody about the plans for Brian Cage until he was allowed to. Mm-hmm. So I'm pretty sure you're going from Team Taz to Tully Blanchard. There's an upgrade. Oh yeah. And and if it pays off, it's a big upgrade. But even if it's just one or two matches. Upgrade is an upgrade. Yeah, and obviously this was this was a squ- squash. squash. One that at one that ended up going longer than the squash we got in the pre-show because this went just shy of three minutes. Oh yeah, this was a pay- this is a pay-per-view squash. Mm-hmm. You know the pre-show that's a TV squash, pay-per-view yeah. squash. And as soon as I saw Brian Cage show up, I was like, okay. Um, Mac, I like you, but this, but you're gonna die <laughs> a lot. This was clearly Tony Khan's the beginning of Tony Tony Khan's apology for not utilizing Brian Cage a mm-hmm. lot in the last couple of years. This is clearly thanks for sticking around. I'm sorry, but here's the plan. I'm gonna stick you with this guy and de- these two goons and pick any belt, other any belt or any championship other than the world title. Let's get to work. Yeah, pretty sure and, that's what it is. And um, through the after after the squash, you had you had Gates of Agony come come in, and that's and I think it's clear now what sort of um what sort of theme that Blanchard is having with this state with this stable. Um, I'd say it, I'd say it'd be it'd be somewhat reminiscent of Gary Hart, you know, and Gary his collection Hart. of fre- and his collection of freaks. Yeah, Gary Hard. You could probably make, you could probably make uh, references to uh, the authors of Pain in NXT with uh, with. Uh... I keep wanting to call him Toka and Razor, but that's not it. No, that's not it. No, no, no. I'm talking about the manager though. Um, Paul Ellering. Ah, Paul Ellering. Thank you. Ah. I do not want to die. I do not want Alzheimer's. God damn it! <laughs> I know. Like, I know where it goes. It sucks. <laughs> but have, having that, having that, I, having about having that collection of monsters is de- is definitely a good way to get heel heat in a company like Ring of Honor. And, and Brian Cage is a big tough dude, but mm-hmm. he also can loot you. Yeah, but there's that little there's that little and twist. While I, while I certainly enjoy the memes that he's created, especially during the times I would see him in PWG, yeah. Cage is not the best talker. No, and that's why it's an upgrade because Taz is a talker, but not, he wasn't exactly the best talker for Brian Cage. 
Taz is a tough Brooklyn badass who, who well, has a obviously he's from New York, so obviously you need someone who could like he's not bad for Will Hobbs and and uh, and uh, Ricky Starks, mm-hmm. pretty rickety column. But for Brian Cage, you need someone who who could properly verbalize the destruction that is about to happen to you. Tully Blanchard is perfect for that. Yeah. Ideally, you would get you would get Paul Ellering, who is an expert in big dudes fucking you up, mm-hmm. but in the verbal way to make it sound el- eloquent. Yeah, but Tully Blanchard is no slouch in that department. Mm-hmm. Now, then we then we then we have um, our for one our then we have um, Lee Moriarty. Who I keep wanting to call Neon Tiger, even though it's Tiger style. Yeah. <laughs> uh, accom- accompanied by accompanied by the Warrior Man Matt Seidel. So this is the first, yeah, and uh, the, he he faced Jay Lethal, mm-hmm. and this is where this is the first, or where you could say all AEW matches or like the all AEW competitors, but the intention is still there mm-hmm. now. Lethal, for context, in the lead up up to this matchup, Jay Lethal had been going into kind of a losing streak in AEW. He did find a dark and dark elevation, but on TV, it which it, it did not click. And he had said it himself in promos where he needs something. He needs something. He needs to change. He needs to find something to change. Because in his head, oh, he knows he's better than this, mm-hmm. but he, he, something's not clicking. And in fairness, uh, the last couple of matches on TV he lost, interference or low blows. Take your pick. Yeah. So, As, bit of an aside. I mentioned this to you a while a while back on the group stream that we that we're in. Yeah. But I I remember I remember some pe- I remember some people not being not being big on Le- on Lethal's current theme and and I was like you're not you're not seeing the big picture because yeah yeah it does tease with the with the opening bit with the opening notes to pomp and circumstance but lethal in his early days um used used um push it from static x yeah and i think i think i think his current theme is intended to be a bit of a callback to that especially with the it's colors call- that it's it's a it's a musical callback to his career in a mm-hmm. sense Obviously, Bob and circumstance because if you hear the name G Lethal, you immediately proceed that with the words Black Machismo. Mm-hmm. If you're a longtime fan, you know him for that because you probably watched TNA not too much, not enough Ring of Honor to associate that Ring of Honor. That Ring of Honor G Lethal is badass. Yeah, the and in fairness, it still was. The other, the other thing that's a bit of a throwback, I'd say, is his current color scheme. Because yeah. in his early Ring of Honor days, he was known as Hydro. Yeah, a lot of lot of blue and black there. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so for, with that context going into the matchup, it's back and forth with Moriarty just starting to get a win. And of course, starting to get mm-hmm. momentum, I should say. Until Jay Lethal says, fuck it, a fist in your dick. Yep. At high fucking speed. He gets it. Lethal injection. And he wins. And people rain booze. And in case you're wondering if he's he'll, if he's thinking about turning heel, uh, he starts beating up Lee Moriarty. In a sense of... In a sense of where you think it's in frustration of going, God damn it, why can't I beat you legally? I had to low blow. And of course, Sanjay Dutt pops up, breaks it up. Tries to break it up, tries to reason, and of course Lee Moriarty gets up, and even Sanjay Dud goes, "Oh fuck this guy!" And they Pearl Harbor poor Lee Moriarty. And the, and that's you. you're wondering. Yep, lethal turned heel. Mm-hmm. And Dud, I don't. I think it's been a while since Dud has wrestled. I think he's going to be in the position he's of a, manager. He's been a produ- he was a producer in WWE for for a hot minute before he, he got let go for, you know, what else? Budget guts. I love how Solomon Monster always tra- always yeah. I love how Solomon Monster always tries to say budget cuts in a very bad Laurenitis impression. 
I mean, to be fair, Laura Ninas is the one who's been making the call for those budget cuts. Mm-hmm. Can't make it. Can't change it. Budget cuts. Sorry, pal. Oh, but I knew it was, I knew it was a matter of time before before a heel turn was going to happen, and unfortunately, he, we he can't. He's a, a major change in AEW. Mm-hmm. So that's why that's why I had to bring it in at the beginning of the match because you need that context to understand mm-hmm. why. Because on paper, it's like it seems like it's just OJ Lethal. They're trying to push him back in Ring of Honor with with Tony Khan money. No, this is a per, this is storyline progression at that point. Yeah. Um, as much, I don't think this is going to be at the same level as his legendary run with Truth Martini, but that's no. a hard thing to top. And to even, be, though, no. even though Truth is retired, I still miss him. We all do. <laughs> no, hey, if he's happy, we're happy for mm-hmm. him. Uh, but no, there's and there's no way to do it. But at the same time, this is a case of you could tell that yes, you need, you need heels. Jay Lethal can do a heel real good. Yeah, and at that point, it's a case of Jay Lethal needs to hang around around the main event scene. Mm-hmm. He ain't gonna do that in AEW, or if he do, he do. He's he's going. He's not gonna be a presence for long. And Ring of Honor, you you have a perfect starting heel for the new Ring of Honor, right then and there. Sanjay Dutt can cut promos too, mm-hmm. as proven by the ending at Dynamite last night. We're not we're not going to cover that tonight. <laughs> no, uh, but uh, for those wondering, yeah, this will definitely be on uh, on before the Russell cast. Uh, I know for a fact the T Dub and Shin have words. They've they've shared a few of those words on TV uh, on Twitter, mm-hmm. and I I have words. Yep. Now next up on the card was Mercedes Martinez beating Willow Knight and being beating Willow Knight and Gale for the. Interim Women's World Championship. Now we don't know why it was interim. We, we I get do. The I do. Impact. Um, it had to, it had to do with the fact that, um, Diana Perazzo had beaten had beaten Roxy in a title v title match on it on Impact. Yeah. Um, Diana Perazzo also having the Reina de Reinas cha- um champion. Yeah. The, 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 so here's here's what it is. Um, I think she might have been double booked. Or she, like was, that. she was. She, she was. She was booked for the multiverse of matches at WrestleCon, and which was happening at the same time. So that's why that happened. But for the long, for the title for title match, actually, it's it's she's uh, Parasa has been doing that for the last couple of months on Impact, where it was the champ champ challenge, mm-hmm. open challenge rules. Anybody could come up, but the the challenger would pick the championship to be on the line. She had wrestled. Uh, she had wrestled. Uh, Fuck it, I had the card last week and I forget. I hate my fucking brain. No to Alzheimer's, god damn it. I'm 35, fucker. Why are you fucking with my brain already? At least wait till I'm 70. Anyway. Um trying to let, let the she it was a it was a lucha libre legend. Uh, long story short, she has the reign of uh, uh, Peraso has the reign of the Reina's championship as mm. well. And Basically, the idea is all right. You could you could pop up, pick your belt. If you beat me, you get it. Mm-hmm. And multiverse of matches. Let's see. I know. I know. I know. There it is. There. Where? Where is the wiki? Give me the wiki. I did it all for the wiki. Come on. <laughs> you made me do the limp biscuit joke. Just give me the goddamn card. All right. All right. Impactwrestling.com. Thank you. Okay. Don't, don't give me the pair, you know, give me the thing. Just give me the goddamn card. Just give me the goddamn match. Give me the goddamn page. <laughs> yeah. My apologies, ladies and gentlemen. This is uh this is embarrassing. Um so let me see. She had she had beat she had beaten um Fabi Apache. Fabi Apache, that's what it was. And she had actually been Fabi Apache for the Reina the Reina's championship. So this is kind of a rematch. Mm-hmm. I just got it now. You beat me to it. I'm, I'm not gonna live that fucker down for the rest of the evening. Sorry, monk. <laughs> but ego the, thing. The point you is, feel me, internet. The point is 
she, the point is, um, she, she was busy. Yeah. And to be fair, Fabi Apache's affair is a good opponent to have. Mm-hmm. If I got that book, and she is signed with Impact, so contractually speaking, she couldn't do Ring of Honor. It was it was double booking, or it's a case of it, it'd be too close to call. So it was literally a case of okay, the interim title, and then we'll we'll unify the the belts when we are able to do so. It's basically what's going on here. Mm-hmm. Now, and to be fair. Mercedes Martinez definitely earns a women's championship. Yeah, um, obviously, obviously Willow was wor- was working face in this thing because I have a yeah. hard Willow's one of those characters who I have a, I have an extremely hard time seeing ever being heel. Her style is very baby face like, to be fair. Yeah, and oh god, could you imagine a team of her with with, with Jordan Grace now? <laughs> That's a team, brah. Yeah. Whereas Mercy, right? And um, I think I think with I think with her being the interim and, win- and winning by um, submission. Yeah. That's uh, that's obviously going to play a factor when um when Par- when Perazzo is able to be able to be booked in a All future match. All for submission specialists, so. Mm-hmm. That that'll work, and it's a very Ring of Honor match to have. Yeah. Then we get to the real shit. Oh. But so with with, with 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 all due respect to Jonathan Gresham and and Bandito, and not so much to Java Guerrero Jr. Of course, this was the actual main event. Yeah. This this is what people paid their fight money, their ticket money, their pay per view money. This is where it went. Mm. This is why you bought it. Yep. And b- Especially top, when top <laughs> guys versus them boys. And on one hand, you have Dax Harwood and Cash Wheeler, FTR, as the who are st- who are still the um trip triple A tag team champions. And on the other hand, you have now the fourteen time. Ring of Honor tag team champions, even bringing back the old ROH belts, so which was the, a nice fucking touch. Mm-hmm. Um, the Briscoe brothers, and what I do, fu- what I did find kind of amusing on the internet as garage match slash stream match slash heavyweight tag team wrestling. Yes, please. Mm-hmm. And what I do, what I did find kind of amusing is two things. One. FTR um, having having tights that were in the Ring of Honor logo font. To be fair, they 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 they, they go extra on, on special occasions. This was warranted. And two, I'm not sure if they've been using that if they've been using it for a while, but it was nice to hear the Adam Massacre version of the Briscoe Brothers theme. I th- they they were using it all weekend long. I do know that. Uh, I do they know that they GCW, didn't. Use they it. had that in GCW. They have their own uh, theme. I don't know what it is, so don't ask me. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it, it, during the weekend, uh, in Impact, they used the Adam Massacre one, which is their best theme, if you ask me. So yeah, that's just my personal opinion. I'd say a close second is their old Sleeping All December theme. Good. That was a good. That's probably what they came into GCW actually. Um, but yeah, I think just bringing that theme back was was the best call to do because a lot of people tuning in, they want to hear the Reach for the Sky Boy with gunshots and, and an awesome guitar riff. Mm-hmm. And um, the i i will fr- i will freely ad- i will freely admit that I obviously I'm a mark for both of these teams, but especially the Briscoes be- and um. They were all. They were always nice. They're always nice to me when I, whenever I would go to Ring of Honor house shows in Minnesota. The, you know what? That 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 is. That, I, I will second that motion. Mm-hmm. Um, I, for those who don't know, back in 2019, I went to Toronto for uh, for literally the day to go to the Ring of Honor show, the the World of the World show, as I explained earlier. Um, I, uh, you know, I, I would do, I would do what I have to do. I check into my hotel, drop my stuff off, and. Yeah, I had myself a quick supper right before going to the show. I get to the show and the Uber driver drops me off on the on the wrong side of the building. 
So I'm literally, I'm like scrambling. I'm trying to find, I see the production truck and there's Mark Briscoe. And I'm like, I was like, are you, and he literally says, hey, are you looking for something? Yeah, I'm looking for the main entrance. Oh yeah, it's that way. Thank you, sir. Mm-hmm. I didn't mark out. I didn't say anything. I was like, I was just trying to say, oh, fuck. Am I, I don't want to go, go in the wrong side and get beat up by, by Yuji Nagata. Okay? <laughs> don't need that in my life. Though that would be a cool story. I, I'm like, I'm not interested in that. I just want to, I want to scan my ticket in, get in, have fun. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, the Briscoes, absolute class acts. So, that that's my story. That's yeah. my Mark Briscoe story. Yeah. <laughs> Um, completely innocuous. I just like, yeah, just, yeah. I just need to find the main entrance. That's it. Class act. Yeah. And this was a this was a very hard hitting hitting getting all the spot getting all the highlights you can kind of match. It's this exactly was what it was. What they, it needed to be. They, they these are four professionals who knew what the fuck they had built up. They knew this was a dream match, so they built it as such. Mm-hmm. And not only that. They built it up as not only a dream uh, a dream match, but a philosoph- a philosophical grudge match. And you want to know? You want to know? There is only one thing, and this and this is a thing that could have made the entire pay per view even even better. That I ca- I kind of missed that didn't happen. And it it's streamers. Re- it's, yep, the streamers. The streamers. it's the streamers. streamers. We need the str- Tony Khan. I'm just, I'm 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 just going to say this right now. You bring you you put the streamers on the merch booth. You will make fucking bank. Yep. And depending on where you go, um, they're dollars to donate. They're a dime a dozen. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> they are they are cheap. Like literally, you you could buy them for a quarter a, a quarter a roll. Put an extra fifty cents. People are going. Well, that's insane. Well, they could have made two bucks on it. Mm-hmm. Who cares? Have fun with it. I think it. Oh, that's another story for another yeah. day. But I have I have always loved the lo- the look of the str- the look of seeing those streamers for for the entrances. It's a I find it to be a far more impactful visual than Pyro ever will be. Hey, and and again, and that was one of those things. That's probably an, a, a, a Tony Khan call, but mm-hmm. and it's more than likely because of COVID that they're, they're not throwing them yet. Yeah, but I, I I'd get, say I'd in like that to case, I get, maybe give it another year before we allow full streamers back. Mm-hmm. I think, but it was-, it was a visual that is very Japanese influence, which was the, the which is what was part of the influence of Ring of Honor at the time too. So there's that. Mm-hmm. No. and FTR ended up ended up end up getting the W, and after and afterwards, um, there was there was one big take a boo from from everybody and a thank you Briscoes chant, which was nice, mm-hmm. and it was obvious. And for for those wondering, yeah, Briscoes might stick around with uh, Ring of Honor, but it'll be Ring of Honor only. Uh, for those wondering why did not the match uh, that we saw did not happen on Dynamite or even on pay per view? Uh, believe it or not, not I'm, I'm pretty sure Tony Khan wanted the Briscoes, but uh, TNT and TBS not so much. Uh, they saw the Confederate flags and went nope. Mm-hmm. Oh. Which, by the way, that, those were things, the things and opinions of, of Jay Briscoe. Oh, yeah, he's got opinions up the ass. He's He can be controversial, but here's the thing. There are pros. <laughs> like, they know when they, like, they'll have their opinions, and obviously it shows up in every once in a while, and that custom belt with those flags is, is definitely going to be a sticky point. It was probably the sticky point that went that had Warner Media go, nope. I'm not. I'm not He's a big. Him. We're not going to have allow you on TV again. That kind yeah, of thing. Although, uh, although, if I'm being honest, I'm not a big fan of holding someone to account for a for a gimmick from. This years was ago. literally five, six years ago. So I'm, I'm in the same boat of, yeah, he had his opinions. He has his opinions, and sometimes they rear out. But you show me a wrestler that doesn't have an opinion on Twitter, and I'll tell you someone who's who doesn't know what who uh, isn't on br- Twitter. I got really. a bridge in Brooklyn. I'll sell you. <laughs> yeah, like at this point, and this was 
at the, at the point, Jay Briscoe was working heel. <laughs> yeah. The custom bell was part of the deal. So. And next we next we have one that I didn't know about until By the way, the day of. showed up, did some super yeah. kicks, and that, was, that set up Dynamite, which was another banger of a tag match. Mm-hmm. And it, and it was one and it was one that was going to have both the AAA and Ring of and Ring of Honor. It was slated for the AAA t- titles, and then the Ring of Honor titles got thrown in there because why not? Mm-hmm. And but anyway, yeah, it's a, it's around this time that we start to see um, bits of advertising for matches that are going to happen on Dynamite, which is definitely a Tony Khan special. Um, and it, 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 at this point, everyone knows he flat out said he bought the fucking thing. So at this mm-hmm. point, this was hey. By the way, if you're enjoying this, why not join us on on on, on uh, why not join Jim Ross, Excalibur, and Tony Schiavone on on Wednesday and Friday? But wait, that's gonna happen. Mm-hmm. You know, people say it's a Tony Khan move, but at the same time, if you have the ability and the le- if you have the legal ability to do things like that, I'm not gonna crap on yeah. it. Oh, I'm just saying that the way the way the way that it was do- was done is definitely in that style. Um, oh, they, 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 you could tell that it was an AEW production mm-hmm. from the get go, and that's fine. The Ring of Honor stuff was fine too, but it had its it had its issues too. Let's not forget. Yeah. Now that being sa- that being said, after that was a match that I didn't know about until the day of. And Basically, like, okay. Red Titus asked. Give me somebody, and Minoru Suzuki was available. Mm-hmm. Basically, and it always makes me smile when, um, when U.S. fans are able to join in on uh, Minoru Suzuki's opening, because I remember mm. there, because, like I said last time, one of one of my more one of my more favored stories with um. Kenta Kobashi was it was his match with Samoa Joe and he and Joe had to go out of his way to explain to him you're working babyface ev- everybody knows who you are and <laughs> Kobashi thinking that he was going to have to work the foreign menace heel and he was so goddamn wrong and so happy to be goddamn wrong and so happy to be goddamn chopping Samoa Joe's chest off yeah which but- by the way uh Actually, no. Let's give them the results, and then we'll talk about Joe versus Suzuki. Oh, for, first off, yeah. I um, first off, I first off, I th- this is also where we started to get little hints during this show about what the um, stable, the foundation is. Now, those who had watched for a while knew what it was, but this was our first hint of it because of the fact that yeah. Rhett Titus the is idea a member was, of that stable. Our, the idea of the foundation was basically built. A little bit before the pandemic started, it was Red Titus. Uh, I believe it was Titus, Lethal, Jonathan Gresham. I'm leaving. I'm, I, there was another name that escapes me. Um, Juice Robinson. Yeah. The idea of the foundation was Ring of Honor had lost its way, and the foundation was built upon the predication of we are the foundation of Ring of Honor. And we will treat Ring of Honor the way it was supposed to be st- stated. Red Titus had joined that th- that thing, and it won the TV title. I actually won it on final uh, at final battle. Mm. So he said, "Give me anybody." And yeah, well, as I mentioned, Minoru Suzuki was very much available that weekend. In fact, had a warm up match at multi match uh, mul- uh, at a practical warm up match against, I believe, Biff Busick. Mm-hmm. That same day, so Minoru Suzuki was was like he was on a steady diet of let's beat beat up motherfuckers. Yeah, and this had one of my this had one of my favorite first few seconds because Titus is demanding that that he be respected as the television champion and decides to get into a slap fight with Suzuki, which lasted all of hey, two seconds. In fairness, it was the same strategy Joe did did this week. And we see that with the right person, it works. But with Rhett, well, you know. He got a receipt and it knocked him on his ass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It did. It totally fucking did. And 
this was this was not exactly a squash, but it wasn't exactly no. a lengthy affair. It was mostly Minoru Suzuki toying with prey, which is why the yeah, thing ended this, up going six minutes. It's it's a technical squash, mm -hmm. the, the kind of match where you you, you know you want to give uh, the opponent some respect, but at the same time, you know that there is a uh, and this is nothing against the Red Titus, by the way, but this mm -hmm. this is a clear indication of skill level being on display. Or that or an obvious, hey, Red Titus is not sticking around, so we'll put the belt on Minoru Suzuki. Mm -hmm. Take your pick on conspiracy theories, folks. Yeah. Now, and the the big surprise with all of this, because one, one had figured Minoru Suzuki is coming coming in part time for one of his U.S. tours. He's not winning the he's not winning the belt. Then he does. Well, yeah, about that. He he <laughs> won the TV title. Mm -hmm. And it was his first American title ever. So, fun factoid, ladies and gentlemen. Um, hey, nothing wrong with it. It was one of those things. Well, they're setting something up, and <laughs> Tony Khan fucking did for sure. And of course, he did. And uh, last night, as a matter of fact, last night from recording, uh, right Wednesday, the main event of Dynamite was Minoru Suzuki defending the uh, World Television Championship against Samoa Joe. Mm -hmm. Folks, forget the the post match bullshit. Joe versus Suzuki was fucking awesome. In fact, I I think I made a joke about contrasting that advertised match versus the advertised match the Fed was was um boasting that week. Oh yeah, I think you did. But I don't. But I personally, and this is nothing against you, monk. But I didn't care. I'm still like dreaming over that sla that shop fest. Yeah. Um, six minutes of two dudes chopping ch chunks off each other, and I was like, "Let's fucking go!" There's and some. Yo had a reference to the machine gun chops he got from Kento Kobashi. And I recently watched that match, and I saw those chops. I'm like, I fucking get that reference. Yeah. And um, well, he's... I like this match. I don't, I don't know, but I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if I, I said so, but I fucking love that match. Just <laughs> oh saying. yeah. Um, I think I don't know if been... I was. I, I might have been too subtle about it. I think Joe's been very, cl very clear that his bit that his big inspiration was Mitsuharu Misawa, the one of the other members of the Four Pillars of Heaven. Hmm. Oh. But, oh God! Have Eddie Kingston and Samoa Joe wrestled to each other? Not to my knowledge, because God damn it, Dad, that's that's a match that just entered my head, and I want that now. Well, you got two All Japan marks, so this is like, yeah, for those one, yeah, Eddie Kingston has a very clear gimmick, but his influences are All Japan and pro wrestling. Noah, mm -hmm. fucking a. To all Japan slash pro uh, Noah marks, all in their influences. Yeah, that's that's. I'm sorry, Mike. I, I have to go. I have to go. I'm like, I I gotta I gotta get you him. Know, I gotta. Yeah, I gotta rub this off. Um, <laughs> TMI, man. But then, anyway, yeah. <laughs> so next was the was the Matt was the pure championship match. And I do want to give credit for the fact that in during the lockdown time, they they um, brought back the pure championship in a very, very good way. The intention and, was always to bring it back. The, uh, just the, 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 the pandemic put a, to put a kind of a temporary halt to it, but they brought it back during the pandemic. And again, the graphics package to everything. Mm -hmm. was so awesome i was so disappointed that there was no graphics to show the, the the rope breaks i was like that's an obvious mistake and i'm like i my hope is that they they that tony khan rectifies that but it might just be a case of they might not be able to do and that that'll be a sad but thing but what was not disappointing was this fucking match yeah wheeler yuda versus the technical beast josh woods Josh the Goods Woods. Mm -hmm. He was my one of my favorites in the in the pure title tournament, as a matter of fact, and definitely showed in this match too. So yeah, yay! At the very at the very least, it was a 
I will give um, Bobby Cruz credit for keeping tr for keeping track of the um, rope and breaks. kudos to the audio guy keeping keeping the the mic uh, audible for the audience at home as well. That was a good call. Mm -hmm. Um, now the storyline with Wheeler Yuta up to this point is that he is his be is back and forth with the Blackpool Combat Club and. This fe this feeling that he needed to prove himself to the point where he pre he pretty much left the best friends. He basically actually it was a friction that was mutually agreed upon, and uh, I'm being I'm being generous with it. Mm -hmm. Yuta was brought in brought in uh, while uh, Trent Beretta was on the mend through through his uh, neck injury. Beretta comes back, likes everybody, fucking hates Wheeler Yuta. You don't want to, dude. I'm not here to. I'm here to hang around. Whatever. I'm here to fuck. I'm fuck. I'm here to fucking win. And of course, he gets slapped by Regal. Beretta becomes becomes even more to, of a dick to Wheeler Yuta. And Yuta, the dude. I'm here to be the best. Hmm. Walks off. Gets slapped. He fights Daniel uh, Brian Danielson in a banger matchup. Fights Moxley in a bloody war. Which, by the way, wrestling fans are prone to overhype. When it comes to, to priest hype matches and saying, without doing spoilers, oh, this is match of the year candidate. This is good. Um, do not listen to that lizard part of your brain that says, oh, they're, they're overhyping Mox versus Wheeler, Wheeler Yuta. They are, they were dead fucking wrong. Those, those, no, those voices in your head saying, no, those fans, oh, it's overrated. It's going to be overrated. That thought is dead fucking wrong. Mm -hmm. That. Match ruled hard. That was that was if if the pure championship was not a star maker and it definitely was Mo his match against Moxley fucking solidified in it. Yeah, and that's the other thing I, I wanted to bring up with this. A lot of a lot of the story it was Wheeler Yuta trying to prove himself first against Josh Woods and then later on. On a rampage against John Moxley, and that's basic. That's basically what was done here. Although, I um, I'm I'm not sure if I quite agree with what Alvarez said about Wheeler U Wheeler Yuta needing to get um new tights. Look, he'll change eventually, but he likes his tights. Well, he, Who gives he a makes fuck? those. Yeah, he makes he makes his own tights. <laughs> And a guy who wants to wear those colors and you kick your a, a guy that could stretch you and kick your ass, even at the experience level that Wheeler Yuta is, mm -hmm. you don't give a fuck what he wears. Yeah. In fact, you're not going to argue what he wears because you're you're slightly afraid for your life. And kind this... of the same thing as Minoru Suzuki and his <laughs> trunks and his hair before he got the he, he lost his hair in a hair match. Mm -hmm. uh, but this was a this was a very good um, technical match. This was a not the greatest pure championship match, but a prototypical pure wrestling matchup. It felt more like a showcase of the of the pure rules than it was a show. It was a showcase for we for both wrestlers and a showcase of the pure rules. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we get to the actual ma the main event. Uh, the, the the main event of the, of the show. Mm hmm. And Chavo Guerrero, who just happened to be plopped on there for no fucking reason other than to plop Chavo Guerrero in there. Yeah. Uh, John, the octopus himself, Jonathan Gresham, with the cla with the classic Ring of Honor title and the ring and the Ring of Honor and the linear Ring of Honor champion, um, Bandito, and and we say linear as he was the last champion to hold it before uh, obviously final battle. So that's why we have the linear and the actual Ring of Honor champion as announced as the world champion mm -hmm. and Gresham who defended a title, he has been he was named the classic Ring of Honor champion to differ more than more than if for if for nothing else to differentiate both world champions. Yeah. Now the I think some First off, I will I will note I love the I always love the old, the old west vibe that Bandito goes with. Um, and the match that you pre the match that you more or less had here was t 
technical versus lucha, and this is where this a lot of this was a showcase for how really goddamn good Gresham is at the at the technical end of things, as, as well as making his stuff believable. And I'd say it was a showcase for both because they want they had yeah. to, to showcase Bandito and give him his respect as oh, yeah. he was he was the Ring of Honor title the champion and he was defending the championship as well. And it, it, this could have very well been two different dudes, but obviously uh, the the promoters kept. I know, kept I, know I, br- I know I bring up Bandito being a be, Bandito being a lucha guy, but he is deceptively strong for his size. He is a, he looks lanky, but he's got strength in him. He, he is very much a, a, a lucha te, a technico, but he's got he's got the strength to back it up. If he needs to be the big beefy boy of the match, he'll do it. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not I'm not gonna I don't think he I don't think he would outstrength Roosh, but he's not gonna no, be far off. Roosh Roosh was the what was the big strong boy of the mm-hmm. two. But mm-hmm. Bandito, when called upon, could do it. Mm-hmm. Now that be that being said, the the one thing the one thing that was certainly a t- was cert- was certainly amusing for me because this is not something you see often. Um, a little ways into the match, Chavo is be is being a Guerrero. <laughs> yeah, you can tell that the obvious situation Ring of Honor was trying to do was. You want to love Gratcham, you want to hate Bandito. When really the fans and really both worker, both guys in the match were like, dude, let's just work baby face versus baby face. That's what they expect. Mm-hmm. And Bandito was from the off was like, I want to work baby face. Fuck you. And meanwhile, Ch- Chavo is tr- Chavo is bringing it is bringing in hardware and the like, trying to help his client. And mid- and a little ways into it. Bandito's like, nope, fuck, you, fuck you. He talks to the ref and gets his own manager ejected, which was an unintentional act of hilarity, if nothing else. Well, it's an it's an un, it's an act of hilarity because it's something you don't see all that often. It's one of those things. Yeah, it's pretty much what that is. <laughs> like usually, usually, whenever you have the manager thing, you have you have um, you have the you have the um. You have the baby face get doing something to get the to get the heel manager um, ejected. You rarely have the wrestler who's being managed <laughs> ejecting their own help. It was clear that Bandito had, had told his uh, his uh, told you Guerrero whatever happens, let it happen. Do not interfere. And Guerrero was more interested in you know being a Guerrero and you know, hey, he's my client. I want that money. Mm-hmm. Philosophical differences in the matchup at hand. Yeah, and eventually, eventually, th- eventually, eventually, you have um, you have Gre- you have Gresham winning out, and the thing that the thing that's interesting with with um, Gresham is not just not just him winning the match, but how it wasn't through a finisher or through a patented submission. It was a fairly standard submission. It, if nothing else, it showed Gresham uh, Gresham's ability as a straight up technical badass. He was a technical wrestler through and through. They called the octopus for a reason. <laughs> Obviously, he has his own finisher, his submission finisher, but the intention was simply to 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 show off his technical ability that yeah. he cannot that he's not just a one or two trick pony. Mm-hmm. Because there's plenty of times we've seen people referred to as technical wrestlers, and the only the only technical part that they really do is their finishing submission, or always always doing strikes and th- and throws to their finishing submission. And that's not really something you can get you can get away with these days. It's not easy to do so anyway. Mm-hmm. But afterwards. Um, lethal, 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 and Dutt come out to do the beatdown, and they then some kissing and moaning. Mm-hmm. And then music hits. A dude comes out, reveals it, removes the towel. It's the mojo. Roof flies off. Yeah, and I do like that they there. There was a bit of a there was a bit of a nod to his 
um, to his to his Fed song, but not out, but still maintaining the Godzilla theme that works. Mikey best Ruckus, for him. you've done it again. He's gotten a lot better. Mikey Ruckus has gotten a lot better with his music, largely because of the fact that he hasn't had he didn't have to compose a bunch of wrestlers' themes in a short span of time like he did for the first year. No, he's 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 got a couple of tunes a month. And oh, that fits him. Let's we'll tweak it. We'll tweak it for him. I'm pretty sure he appreciates that he doesn't have to do any work for Jericho. Oh God! <laughs> but I will. I will say, Mikey Ruckus is a much better wrestling composer than Tony Oliver. Fair. No, Tony Oliver has had his strokes of geniuses as well. He had his strokes of he had his strokes, but he had a bit of a bad habit of falling back on certain chords. Yeah. Now, when it comes to the aftermath of Supercard of Honor, I I have seen some cynical folks say say that it was that it was a glorified advertisement for next week's Dynamite. If and to be fair. They're not wrong in that assessment, but it's a very crude. It's a very crude surface level, mm -hmm. and it's not entirely accurate either. Yes, it's an advertisement for Dynamite because what else are we gonna do? Ring of Honor. This was literally this show at this point in time was literally honoring the last bits of the Sinclair era. Mm -hmm. This and, was something Tony Khan did not want to do, but had to do because at this point it's either that or lose more money. If if anything, when I can, when I look back at um at Final Battle and now Supercard of Honor, what ends up coming to mind is not necessarily um Final Nitro and Big Bang, but actually what One Night Stand was supposed to be. In a sense, yeah, One Night Stand was what do you read? Oh five or oh six. Um, can't because there, there are two clear, yeah, a little bit of both. Because mm -hmm. it's a because it, it, if, it, if it was one night it, stand 05 was celebrating ECW's past, yeah. Whereas the idea with one night stand 06 is it was supposed to be setting up ECW's future, and it both in, in, in that case, both shows in, in their own perspective bubbles were successful. By and large, the uh, but yeah, with Ring of Honor, with Super Card of Honor, this is more of a statement of intent. Mm -hmm. Plus, hey, let's just have some fun because hey, you know what? Let you know we we got a couple of people. We got to we got to rearrange the championships or as much as the championship as, as possible, and then make sure our ducks are in our air in a row. And well, you know what? We'll have some fun. Get people and some fun shows. In the in the weeks in the week or so since we've had, we've had obviously we've had frequent we've had frequent mentions on on Dynamite and Rampage to certain hey, people's yeah. Ring of Honor history. There was the whole, there was one of there was the greatest entrance at um, Revolution that ha that happened. Yeah, ever since the purchase, you would have uh, CM Punk be leaning heavy into his uh, influence into his uh, early Ring of Honor days, but. Let's be fair here. That was the connotation. the The rivalry between he and C him and CM Punk, uh, he and uh, MJF, was leaning towards. Mm -hmm. The story was, "You broke my heart as a kid. Now I'm here to break you." Yeah, in a sense, kind of storyline. I, I do highly recommend everybody who's everybody who's listening to go find a docu go find a documentary video called "Better Than You." It's more of a a well edited. I mean, documentary is a good word for it, but uh, it's more of a heavily, it's a very long promo video of the history of the rivalry between MGM. And it goes deep. It starts with MG. It literally starts with Maxwell, actual Maxwell Jacob Freeman's television debut on the Rosie O'Donnell show. Mm -hmm. Y'all thought that was a fucking joke. No, Max Freeman was on Rosie O'Donnell's show. And in that video, he says, well, I want to be an opera singer. Oh, I also want to be a wrestler. Mm -hmm. 
And he was so cute at the time, to be fair. Yeah. Now, in in the... You know, then shor- shortly after this pay per view, we have we have se- we have several ti- we have several titles either being shown or def- or defended. Hell, Wheeler Yuta in his bl- in that bloodbath match with Thumb. John Literally Moxley. a week after that beautiful match, he had Josh Woods. He had a uh, a star cementing match, as I mentioned, with John Moxley, and he came out with the pure title. He was a, he he came out with a pure title, and he was acknowledged as such as well. Mm-hmm. Um, the t- a few the last few times that Red Dragon has been on, they've brought up the fact that they are multi-time Ring of Honor champions. As I think they've also brought up their times with the um, IWGP ju- um, Junior. Yeah, they they had brought the the IWGP tag title had been brought up as well. Mm-hmm. And in. And now, now, and of course, there was the there was the match that we mentioned earlier with Minoru Suzuki and Samoa Joe over the ROH TV title. And I think you're get, I think you're going to be seeing that that quite a bit of the of these of the titles from ROH being de, being defended or or showcased on AEW. They're, I mean, they, they, and a lot of people will say, "Well, they they made Minoru Suzuki a, a transitional champion." One, fair. Two, what else is Minoru Suzuki going to do? And if you're going to be a transitional champion, if you're going to lose the belt in, in such a short time, make it a badass match. And to be fair, they yeah. did Samoa Joe did, and Minoru Suzuki. Were people expecting yeah. a long reign from Minoru Suzuki on on this on what on what was always going to be a short term? A short-term thing. We all knew it was. It was. It was. We knew it was going to be short-term. It was just a matter of when, not if. Mm-hmm. And hey, you know what? There was a part of me that thought, well, okay, he's going to have one defense against Samoa Joe, and then Tony Khan will pick. Uh, will pick someone that could that will topple the murder grandpa, and everybody will be happy. No, Samoa Joe pretty much had a knockdown drag out, and he happy happened to survive and win the title. Mm-hmm. There you go. Now, with the, with that in mind, as far as the potential future for this re, for this rebirth of Ring of Honor, um, the main thing that came out of the that has come out of the media scrums in the last few weeks is Tony Khan seemingly wanting to make Ring of Honor. A, a um developmental program for AEW kind of if if not that but a feeder a feeder system a feeder system that could include underutilized uh, AEW talents as well as independent talents basically what Ring of Honor was intended to be with the Sinclair group is like okay everyone gets paid for the show and if you're a champion we'll keep you around we'll book you for this date but that's it like, everybody else you're free to do whatever. I think it'll be a, a combination of that and everyone that 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 works, you know, dark elevation, dark. Anybody that's that's not busy on the, on on Wednesday, Friday, you'll throw, probably throw it throw them in, in Ring of Honor to help populate the, the 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 roster, and you know, hopefully build a few stars along the way, and you know, use the prestige of the Ring of Honor championships mm-hmm. to help build up and give them some early championship runs. That said, um, I do think that in order to build up some momentum with that, so it doesn't so it doesn't get looked at as a B league, I think I think certain I think certain stars who have that past pedigree have to have to make their presence known with this new Ring of Honor. And obviously, Samoa Joe is one, but there's one of there's one name that's currently a free agent at the time of this recording. That I'd hope that I'd hope to see join in on this, and that's Claudio Castagnoli, mm-hmm. the former Antonio Cesaro. He is he's he's I, I don't know the length of his uh, current uh, ninety day thing is is I don't know when that's ending, but one can only assume that's that's his next move. Doubly so if he can if he can talk his, if he can talk his teacher to coming back. Ooh. Oh, 
Because what, what's he going to do? Watch Duke basketball lose again? No! <laughs> Ow! I like you, I like you, Chris, but you but you know how this works. All in case you didn't pick up on, on the on the subtlety there, K O W Kings. <laughs> oh. At the at the very least, I'd like to see them do a reunion as a tribute to the late Vero the virus. I just want to see Chris Hero and 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 Donia Cast and. And Claudia Castagnoli tear it up in the tag team division yep. again. The but if the you if imagine you, the KOW versus the Bucks, KOW yep. versus FTR. Oh, I'd there is. I will admit that there that there are a couple uh, there are a couple boys who, that they have in my boy stable that I'd like to see get get featured in this new in this newfangled Ring of Honor. Um, I'm not sure. Mostly because I haven't seen them in a while, and I'm not I'm not sure if they're I'm not sure if they're still on the roster or, or if they've gone elsewhere. Um, one of them is the only the only was the only Wisconsinite I will actually give my props to the Beer City Bruiser, and the other is quite possibly the grouchiest the grouchiest man in wrestling, Silas Young. Silas Young, I was gonna bring those up. To our knowledge, they are not signed to uh, to Ring of Honor or AEW. They are, in fact, free agents, and that that was like that was like I was going to bring it up for a, a little uh, earlier. That was one of the big absences from this one because Silas Young and Beer City Bruiser were heavy presences, even during the the height of the Elite and Bully Club and Ring of Honor. Mm -hmm. They were in the thick of things. So, absolutely, that that's a name that. One hopes that are still around and still relevant. Yeah, the other, the other, the the other name that apparent apparently I had, apparently I had thought he had he had retired and left wrestling, but he but he's been coming back on indies. That I wouldn't I wouldn't be opposed to seeing is one hundred percent pure grade hosshole. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie uh, Hollis, because I have him, to, I have him to thank for introducing me to a band that I, a band that I am ve very fond of, who's who's uh, who is up in Canada. That being the Wild. Mmm, good call. Um, who could best be described? At, who could best be des be descri be described as a less pr a less pretty version of a less pretty version of Volbeat. They are essentially Canadian rednecks. <laughs> they are they are a thing, folks. Just mm -hmm. saying. That and the that and they're one of the few bands I knew of that that had a full on <laughs> a full on beer sponsorship. They did. I haven't had that variety because I can't get that in Minnesota, but you can't it can't be worse than Steve Weiser. Low bar, I know. No bar, but hey, you know what? I want to try that uh, that broken skull IPA, and or American Lager. Mm -hmm. Oh, just I'm not gonna do the two. I'm not gonna try and join the two liter club again. Nobody should do that. No, no one should. I I think the the IPA is six point five AB, ABV. No. Well, do you know what the two liter club is? It's a two liter bottle of booze. Yes, you have you have to drink you have to drink a two liter bottle of any, of a beer of your choice, and then throw a dart at a dartboard. Yeah, good luck with that. Yeah, um, Tex did that once, and for whatever reason, he used Guinness. <laughs> he has no idea why he chose Guinness for it. I, I would assume. I mean, it's it's Guinness. It's 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 not a bad beer, but it's not the, you know, not not the, not the beer I would go for a challenge like that. No, but that be that being said, I do think I do think you're going to see a lot of um, AEW and ROH talent mixing until a until a full on TV either t either TV or something similar deal is um, concocted. And 
having that library is actually going to make a stronger pitch for what Tony Khan has been hinting at for the for the past few months that he wants to try and get a get some sort of get some sort of streaming deal i.e. to put them on HBO Max or something like that and of course that might get a bit more complicated given what's been happening in the business world where um AT&T the parent companies of Warner had realized that they're not a, they're not all that good at this entertainment thing, being a telecommunication company, and sold the, sold their con, their control of Warner to Discovery, which is why you're which so, is why you're seeing a fire sale in some parts of DC. So, a lot of people. So, for those wondering what how does that affect AEW, a lot of people. Who were agree? Uh, who were uh, uh, part of bringing AEW into TNT and TBS, or are, are either on the chopping blo- chopping block, or I've already left. Uh, it is said that whoever is going to be running the TV side of things is not exactly a big wrestling fan, but the numbers for AEW on TNT and TBS are so good that, like, they're the number one show on on the on the network and they are consistently in 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 the top slot for wednesday so one could assume that yes they want to uh, one could want to dispatch wrestling from tnt again but one looks at the money they're making with it and go so long as there no one's getting murdered fine I think the I think the other um I think the other reason that they that I don't I don't see them getting dropped anytime soon is with the amount with the amount of content that they, with the amount of content that they have um they would rather have it in their hands than in someone else's hands. There's that, and Jamie Kellner was is the, I think that's the big difference between. WCW and Jamie Kellner and whoever's running. I don't know who the name of the person is. I don't know who it is. Mm-hmm. That might change by a week for the week basis. I'm just going to say the person who's going to run the TV side of things for TBS and TNT and AEW. AEW is, is a much more stable and exciting show. And WCW was run by Vince Russo. That so. Is- that and they had lo- that and they had lost a shit. They had been a huge million. money loser. So mm-hmm. there, that's the world of difference here. The company's in, in much more stable shape managerially, money wise, and there's no stake in it in ownership this time around. This is literally a company that's providing a television, a three hours of television pro- programming a week with an extra hour every once in a while, mm-hmm. and it's successful. Yeah. I would say I if I'm being honest if there's if there's anybody whose management might be might be higher risk for the chopping block within the Warner family I'd on, I'd honestly say it's on the DC side of things not so much on the yeah um, AEW side of things because I have I've been following the quiet civil war that's been going on between D- between um DC and a- and AT and T and hell the f- hell um AT and T was the sole reason the Snyder Cut even came out because because the sole because um there's been a lot of office politics that have gotten in the way of a lot of stuff regarding D- regarding DC both on the comic side and on the film side and the the rumor mill that I've been getting is that. Some of the people who were who were pushing for some of the bad DC movies, and when I say bad, I'm um, mainly talking things like Wonder Woman 1984, which I know some people defended. It wasn't as good as the first one. And, no, but it was still fine, and there are worse movies out there. Mm-hmm. And um, Birds of Prey, which I don't think you're going to defend for a minute. I'm not going to defend it, but I'm not going to say it was bad either. I'm like, I had fun with it. It's... um. It's one of those your mileage may vary kind of movies, and it's the kind of movies where you you know if it's not universally loved, 
it is what it is. So it, I can't I'm say, not going to shit on that. I can say for a fact, however, that Birds of Prey did not do well on, in the box office. And no. the there's been rumors that they want to revitalize um, Superman and fo- and focus Again? more on that's take it with a grain of, take it with a grain of salt yeah. but the I, the idea Long is that the story van, short <laughs> the vanity <laughs> projects <laughs> in DC might be coming to an end yeah long story short for those worried about you know, AEW and Ring of Honor being in trouble don't yeah your 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 concerns are founded but can be can be put down for a while. At this point, unless there's someone who is a gigantic anti wrestling person, e- even then, there's enough smart people in there to realize the numbers are good enough to, to keep to warrant keeping AW around as. And he, even and again, it's not even an ownership thing. It's literally, hey, they're they're providing a television show that is successful on your network. Why are we cutting them? Whoever cuts that and sees the money in the pit go, even go deeper is getting fired. So it's a case of they're successful. They're if they're successful, they, they'll be left alone. And to be fair, they are successful. Mm-hmm. Um, and given some of the stories I've heard about in, about the international television deals, I think I don't th- I don't think we've got to worry too much. And. Even with even with all that, the f- the future when it comes to wrestling is certain is certainly going to be interesting, and at the very least, people who ha- people who still have honor club subscriptions will be able to keep will be able to keep that around. Yeah, for the short term, you still have access to all those shows. There, are, that that is a big tape library. That does include Samoa Joe versus versus Kento Kobashi, by the way. So. And there's Bobby Fresh Vish versus uh, Tomohiro Ishii, which is the basis for why I want a replica of that TV title version, mm-hmm. which is no longer available, and I'm so goddamn mad. But it is what it is. Yeah, but that will do it for this particular episode of Geek Watch. I know it. I know doing two Geek Watch specials back to back might seem a bit excessive. This was just a case of timing. Just yeah. happened to line up that way. And a lot very, of shit happened in between. At the very least, it's good. To, it's good to use a Geek Watch special to talk about something good, rather than talk about something that was shit, like what, like what we did last night with the Wheel of Time. <laughs> you but, poor bastards! But we will be. Ba- but I will be back here tomorrow for another for another episode of the Valley of the Judged. As well as an, as well as another interview that I'll be do, that I will be doing because, according to some of our colleagues, I am a complete madman, who uh, who somehow does not get burnt out. But that is a story for another day. So until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra. I am your gaming monk, and join the watch.